Welcome to Grace Life Church Podcast. If you would like any more information about us, please visit our website, gracelife.com.au. It is good to be here. It's good to be on this platform and it's good to preach the Word of God. And, and we're just going to pray. Come on, stand to your feet with me as we pray. Um, it's really my intention not to preach long this morning. So if I preach long, you know that I'm lis- not listening properly to the voice of God. I, I, I do not, genuinely do not want to preach long. I genuinely do want us to have an encounter with Jesus. Amen. Pray to that end with me now. Father, I pray that we would see you this morning. Um, I pray, Lord, that um, we know you're here when we've been worshiping. But, Lord, I pray, a, uh, uh, Lord, a lifting of our faith this morning to believe and to know that you are our God and that, Jesus, you are our Savior And Lord, that you've got everything under control and that you've got plans and purposes for us to fulfill. I pray, Lord Jesus, you minister to us whatever way you want. Uh, Lord, use the scriptures, anoint your word. Uh, Lord, my understanding of them, Father, I pray, Lord, that you just guide my tongue and the notes that I have. That, Lord, that we would see you and meet with you. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Grab your seats. Thank you. Um, before I... Before, hey, this thing creaks. Sorry. <laughs> it's a good creak. Uh, reminds me of my bones. <clears throat> As I was worshipping, I just really felt there is somebody here this morning and um, you're struggling with something and there's this turmoil in your life uh, and it's it's a Christian. I feel it's a Christian, somebody that knows the Lord, but you're struggling with something in your life and And in some ways you're wondering, why does God not do something about this? Because you know that you're right. I just, just, I just sensed that struggle and I felt God saying, stop striving because he has got it. So if whoever that is for this morning, receive it. Stop striving. Cease and desist. Stop striving and let God Amen? Whoever that's for. Okay, this morning, hey, man, we've gone up market. We've got a glass. Wow. Need to get on with it, don't I? Clock's ticking away. I says I've got 45 minutes, really? Wow. <laughs> Who said no? <laughs> You're in shock, aren't you? Oh, man, that's a Bad thing that, 45 minutes. Okay. This morning, I, 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 you know, when I was thinking about this message, when Pastor Scott asked me, um, I started thinking about hope. And I know I've preached on hope here before. And so I want to talk a little bit about hope this morning. There was two things that motivated me um, to this. One was the world in which we live in. We live in a, a really upside down, traumatic world in turmoil at the moment. Would you agree? The stuff that's happening in Ukraine, the riots, the political upheaval, COVID and the fallout of that and our lives being changed forever. You know, just the stuff that's that, that's happening, the, 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 the pressure which is on our lives now financially and, you know, the supply chains and things going up and the just general uncertainty of everything. And it's always there, you know, throughout the whole day. Switch on the TV, listen to the radio, podcasts are even interrupted with the news. And uh, sometimes I just get sick of the news. 
Because if you listen to the news long enough, you end up depressed and filled with a sense of despair and hopelessness. So that, that was the one thought that's in my mind this Christmas season. And um, the, the other was stuff that people are going through themselves. And, you know, maybe a lot of that is stuff that my, myself and Janet uh, and as a family that we've been going through and are, are going through. And... Um, and how people would be filled with a sense of hopelessness when life seems to be going bad and it doesn't make sense and you can't see a future in it. And, and maybe for people here this morning, it's your first Christmas without a loved one. Or maybe your job situation's on the line or you've lost your job or the circumstances have changed and there doesn't seem to be a, a future and it seems hopeless. Or maybe you're just under that unrelenting pressure and the circumstances and there's no way out and there's no way forward and there's no hope of change. And that's what got me thinking about this message. Uh, where there is no hope, people give up. Without hope, there's no future. Uh, loss of hope leads to despair. And despair deadens the senses of your heart to any prospect of ever finding help or rescue from the life and the circumstances that you're trapped in. But if we've got hope, but if we've got hope, man, there's an echo to this. Let's try that again. But if we've got hope, <laughs> you can find hope in God today, this very Mormon. Amen? You can find hope, and that's my prayer. If you're in a sense of hopelessness, that you find hope this morning. And i uh, got a couple of readings. You'll know this one, Psalm 42, verses 2 and 3 and, and verse 5. Uh, I'll read it to you. I thirst for God, the living God. When can I go and stand before Him? Day and night I have only tears for food, while my enemies continually taunt me, saying, Where is this God of yours? Wow. Anybody been there? You got that ringing in your ears. And then verse 5. Love verse 5. You know, verse, verse 5 is you, you read about, Why are you cast down? Oh, my soul. It's, it's like you standing outside of yourself and having a chat to yourself. Why are you cast down? Oh, my soul. Why are you in despair? Why are you discouraged? And why are you disquieted within me? Why are you so sad and so disturbed? And here it is. Hope in God, for I shall yet praise Him for the help of his countenance. Hope in God. I will praise you and I will worship you again. I will see your face shining upon me once again. I will see you and I will experience you when I'm in your presence and I will be filled with hope. That's what the psalmist is saying here. And Christmas, you know, the message of Christmas is a message of hope to a world in despair. Jesus came down to be one of us, Emmanuel, God with us, to identify with us, to feel our pain, to bear our sin, to pay our debt, to take our place, to lift our burden, to set us free, to save us, and to give us hope. Can anybody say amen? Christmas, great message of hope. And it's a hope which extends beyond our, the circumstances in which we live. It's a hope which reaches into eternity. Oh, I'm glad I'm saved. <laughs> I'm glad when I focus my attention on what God's got to say. I'm glad when I focus my attention on Jesus my Lord and get my eyes off whatever I'm going through. Because I tell you, it does something on the inside of me. 
I hope it will do the same for you. Liz Moldovian, a lady in America, for 20 years she battled a heroin addiction. And she had a, a partner who was also addicted. And she's in a terrible state. She's got a three-year-old daughter. And he became very, very abusive. And she had to leave. And she's out on the streets with her daughter. And there's nothing else. She's got no money. She's got no car. She's got no home. And the effects of that drug addiction left her that her hair and her teeth are falling out. And her skin is covered in bleeding scabs because she keeps scratching those scabs and her weight is down to 50 kilograms and her nerves is in such a state that her hands shake continuously. She could not sleep. She tried to end her life on antidepressants. No hope, no future, written off by everybody else. And then one day, week before Christmas, 2006, she found herself in a church service and she heard the preacher call out, don't you want to be made whole? And she immediately remembered that voice and those words because she'd heard them a week earlier in the middle of one of those sleepless nights. And that day, she met Jesus in that church and she found hope and her life was turned around. And now years later, the mother of four children and a grandmother and an author, and she carries a message of hope to people who are in a hopeless situation. Amen? She found hope. You can too. There's a lady I know, her name's Valerie. Valerie used to be part of our youth team growing up in a church in, in Ireland. And she was a couple of years younger than me. But Valerie really was, didn't make a real commitment coming along at church, doing the church thing. Her family dragged her along, but she walked away. She was a wayward child. And she ended up marrying the wrong sort of fella, and her life really fell to pieces in a big, big way. And for years, I knew nothing about her. But she was broken. She had a couple of kids she lost her kids for a while because of the circumstances of her own life. She's now a single parent. Her life is in a complete and a total mess. And my mother met with her through the organization, which I told you about. My mom used to run a, a ministry to single parents in, in Northern Ireland. And uh, Valerie was one of the people that she worked with. And she was brought back to Jesus, gave her life to the Jesus. That broken lady, I've seen her since. Her life totally turned around because someone took the time to share Jesus and the answer with her. And after some counseling and what have you, her life has totally turned around. And she met a fellow who also was a single parent, a divorcee, two divorcees. And this other guy also through the same organization. So I guess my mum was a bit of a matchmaker because these two ended up getting together and they got married. And they went into full-time ministry together as two divorcees. Even that was a struggle yeah, with the organization that I belonged with in Ireland. And they went on to pastor uh, one of the oh, very well-known church in Belfast at the time. Now she's, you know, mother and grandmother, and they're serving the Lord. Hope. Amen? You're in a place of hope this morning. If I've got hope, hope in God, that those verses said, hope in God, hope is an expectation. Um, from a biblical sense, it's a total grounding of one's confidence and expectation in God's goodness and His providential care, even in the face of deep, deep 
trouble. Hope is something to look forward to. And we should be a people that carry a great expectation. Amen? We should live our lives with something to look forward to. Amen? Speaking to Christians this morning. And we can because of our hope which is rooted in God. The world is filled with hopelessness. Many have no expectation because they can see no future. But we've got a hope which is steadfast and sure. We hope in God and this hope will not disappoint us because God is the God of all hope. You can't talk to me, by the way. You can shout and scream. I don't mind. I want you to get happy, but not just emotionally. I want you to see that our God is for you. Thank you, Jesus. God wants grace life to be a house of hope. I'm talking to us now collectively as a group in a a slightly different tent. He wants us to be a house of hope, not a house of negativity, not a house of doom and gloom, but a house of hope. Amen? The people, when they come to this place, when they get drawn to this place, they'll find hope. And they'll find hope which is birthed in a, a receptive heart and soul to the good news of the gospel about Jesus Christ because He is the answer. Amen? Jesus is the answer. And He's given us this hope of a blessed hope that we shall live and reign with Him forever. So let's be a people which always give people um, some hope. Let's point them to the hope which is in God, a solid foundation. Let's give them an expectation, something to look forward to. So no matter what the economy says, no matter what the political situation may look like, no matter what uh, your employment's like, uh, no matter where your shares is going at the moment, whether up or down, no matter what your trouble is, if you've got Jesus at the helm of your life, you've got a lot to look forward to. (laughs) Amen. So may we always be a house of hope in this place. Filled with people of hope. I've got to move on, haven't I? Yes, I've only got one hour, 30 minutes left. <laughs> hope also means to wait. Okay? I want to break this down. Out. It means to wait. Waiting hopefully and expectantly. So when, when the psalmist here in Psalm 42 says, Hope in God, for I shall yet praise Him. He is saying to his soul, just hang on. Don't give up. Hope against hope. God is going to come through for you. Wait for your God, for you will praise Him soon. Hope in God. Wait for Him. You will see the face of God. And He will look on you. He will give you His full attention. That's what that that, that verse means. As you worship Him. And as you wait expectantly in faith for God. Hope in God. For I shall yet praise Him. Wait for Him. When I read those words and read those words, I... I really felt that for someone here this morning, that verse is particularly for you. And as I thought about it, and say, God, who is it? But he didn't show me, so I'm not even going to try and go there. But I did write out some stuff, and I'm going to just read it as I really felt God prompt to me. And, and this is what the, the word of the Lord is for that person this morning. You will again experience God's presence. You will feel Him, and you will worship Him, and praise Him again. Hope in God despite what your present situation is. When you feel that God doesn't know and He doesn't care, when you feel that He's not really there, when the thing that you're facing will not shift, when a hundred voices say, where is your God? 
Hope against hope. Wait in faith for God because He will come through for you. That is a word for somebody who is feeling that the situation will not change. And God is saying to you, hope and wait expectantly for me because it will. I have hope. I was sitting out in my front porch one morning and uh, doing a bit of sermon prep in my head while I'm eating my cereal and drinking my green tea. See, I'm healthy too. That was for Stella. That's a private joke. <clears throat> and as I sat there, I saw this eagle overhead and it was going round and round and round in a clockwise direction. And it's the way, funny way my mind goes. I thought to myself, you stupid bird. Has it lost its way? Did it not know how to turn left? Did it have an upturned feather in its tail rudder that stopped it from going straight? Yeah, I do have a bit of a weird imagination. But you know what it was doing? You, It was riding that thermal. And it probably was looking for breakfast too. <laughs> and when I thought about that, I thought about Jack the Rat. I have to explain. A friend of mine, Andy. Um, Andy and Jack, they've got a pet pooch, or they had a pet pooch. Um, it... it <laughs> It was a pretend dog. It was a Jack Russell. Mad Jack Russell it was. We looked after it a time or two. And I thought about Jack the Rat. I called it a rat. And I thought that, that eagle could spot Jack and swoop down and carry him off. And uh, my friend Andy would have been a very, very happy man when he got home because he did not like Jack the Rat. It's amazing what you think about when you're preparing sermons, isn't it? And eating a healthy breakfast. But I was reminded of Isaiah 40. And Isaiah 40 has got something in it about eagles. And I just want to look at a couple of verses as, as we look at that this morning. Isaiah 40, uh, verse 7 and 8. It says, The grass withers and the flowers fade beneath the breath of the Lord. And so it is with people. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of the Lord stands forever. And here's the thought. People will come and go. Powers and nations will rise and fall. Circumstances will come and go. Good times, bad times. But the word of the Lord endures forever. <laughs> the Word of God spoken by the breath of the Holy Spirit, it's powerful, it's creative, it's enduring, it's absolute truth, it's life. Amen? And maybe you don't feel it, and maybe you feel nothing this morning, but I want to say the breath of God is in this place. And He's able to breathe on His Word, that written Word, which is in a book in many different versions. But I want to, He is able to breathe on His Word that it becomes life and food for your soul and it, it will affect you in a positive way. Amen? The Word endures forever. So we need to turn away from our reliance upon anything that this world can give the political powers what they say, what's been created, what they built. We need to turn away from that and focus our lives by faith on the unfailing Word of God. Hope in God. Wait upon God. Come down a bit. Verse 27 of Isaiah 40. O oh, Jacob, how can you say the Lord does not see your troubles? How many times have you felt that? 
O Israel, how can you say God ignores your rights? Have you been there? Then it goes on, verse 28. Have you never heard? Have you never understood the Lord, the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth? He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depth of his understanding. And then it goes on. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired and young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who Wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. (sighs) Those who wait on the Lord. And by the way, if you look at the Hebrew words that's used there, it can also mean they that hope in the Lord. Wait and hope are connected. Wait and hope in the Lord. And when you do, you become like an eagle. And eagles are designed to fly high. And we are designed to fly high above the world with all its problems. And when you're up there, you see things from God's perspective, not an earthly perspective. And when it comes to spiritual warfare, you see the enemy, where the enemy is, and you're able to attack from above. And the eagle rides the the air currents effortlessly. Oh, we could talk about that. And we are designed to ride on the wind and the air of the Holy Spirit. Not flapping about, doing our own thing, getting nowhere, achieving nothing, and losing our feathers. But riding on the currents of the Holy Spirit. Flying high into the sun. You know, eagles have a protective flap over their eyes so that they can fly directly into the sun. And we need to sun, Jesus Christ, and be filled and illuminated with His light and His glory. Amen. Other birds will never experience this. But you're different. We are regal. We're like the eagles. That is who you are in Christ. Deuteronomy 32 verse 11. Like an eagle that stirs up its nest and hovers over its young. That spreads its wing to catch them and carries them on its pinions. Exodus 19 verse 4, I carried you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. And you know the the story of the eagles, I'm sure, and how it works, you know, that, you know, how God takes out the softness of the nest that you've been nestled in and ruffles it up and makes it uncomfortable. You know how it goes. This is what happens in reality with eagles. And it gets so rough and so uncomfortable there that you just got to get out of that situation. You just got to get moved. Why? Because God wants you to fly. Amen? Too many of us are tied up in a place of bondage in our minds. Too many of us are just sitting in a comfortable nest. But God wants you to fly. And when that bird eventually topples out the nest, which is built on a cliff face, it begins to fall. And as it falls rapidly, Mother Eagle swoops down and catches the young bird on the pinions of its wings and lifts it up again. And you think, oh, all is good and all is happy and it's wonderful again. And then the Mother Eagle tips its wings like this and off you go again for another free fall. I tell you, it's better than any you know, ride Down comes Mother Eagle again and picks it up and the process goes. Tip, out you go and eventually the young eagle learns to fly. Could it be that some of the stuff that you're going through is in fact a loving God teaching you It's not always all the devil. And God will use anything and work it out for good to those that love him and are called according to his purpose. 
God wants you to fly. But has your trouble got your focus and killed your hope? Coming back to that verse, but those who wait on the Lord, those who hope in the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. So wait on the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Hope in the Lord. How do we do it? I thought about this. How can I hope in God? How can I wait upon God? How can I fully trust Him? And this is where uh, people, and this is where I would get my notepad out and think of a formula. Because we like formulas. And we like a bit of order. And, oh, if I do this ABC, it'll be all right. Okay. If you want a bit of a formula, here it is. <clears throat> Number one, faith. A faith that is rooted in the unchanging Word of God. That God is who He say, say He is. And when he, what He says in His Word is actually true. So that's faith. Belief. Believe. Believe that God sent Jesus, the Son, the second person of the Trinity. God of very God to go to the cross for you. To pay your penalty. To pay for your sin. To make a way for you to be saved and to be real hell. Believe it. Thirdly, repent. Repent that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. So re, re, you know, confess your sin. Repent from your own way of living. And give your life totally to Jesus. That's what repentance means. Making Him your, your Lord. And if you do that, you will not perish, but you shall receive eternal life. That's what the Word says. So that's repentance. But repentance revolves, involves surrender. And this is what I want to get to this morning. A surrender, a letting go of all dependence upon other people, upon self-reliance, upon other things. A letting go of that and coming to a place of hoping and waiting. Hoping and waiting has to do with surrender. To drill into this a little bit more as we sort of finish up this morning, let's look at Mark chapter 7. You know, we did a whole series on Mark. Series 2 next year. Mark chapter 7. This is where Jesus has a, a run-in with the religious leaders over ritualistic purity and uh, purity laws and church rules to bring it into our language. The disciples had been caught eating food without first a ritual washing of their hands, and the leaders found fault with them, and, and, and so it went. But Jesus says these words in verse 15, Not what goes into your body that defiles you. You're defiled by what comes from your heart. So all the ritual and all the formula, and I've just gone through a bit, Following rituals and formulas cannot help you. The real issue for all of us is the heart. It's the inside. So this word surrender is to surrender, letting Him deal with your heart. Why? Because you are broken. We are all broken without Jesus. And we need a change on the inside. We need healing on the inside. But that takes surrender. If I have hope, hope in God, wait upon God, that's to do with surrender. It's a posture of totally hand, handling over to the Lord and believing and trusting and waiting for Him to do it. It's a recognition that you can do nothing. And for those of us that have been there trying to work our way through the situation, you realize you come to a place where I can do nothing. And I need Him. I need Jesus. 
So it's not doing that religious stuff on the outside, and I'm not knocking that, but the, the going to the church, the paying of your tithes and money into the church, the keeping of the commandments, the doing good to others, the, the praying every day, the reading of your Bible, quoting Scripture over your life, and I believe it, shouting at the devil, you, if it's just a ritual, it's religious works. And it may look all good on the outside. If I do these things, God will bless me. He will come through for me. <laughs> you can earn, cannot earn God's favor. Are you getting this? Us religious, Pentecostal, evangelical, charismatic, whatever you want to call yourself, we can surround us with a ritual and we look so good. But I don't know about you. I want life. I want the real deal. I don't want to show. I don't want to just go through motions week in and week out. I want a living, active relationship with my God. That's where my hope is. So this posture of hoping and waiting is a place of surrender. God, I've done. Yes, I will read my Bible. Yes, I will pray. But I'm going to do that because you're motivating me from the inside and something has changed. Are you getting my heart? With 11 minutes, 55 seconds to go. I really felt that we needed to hear this this morning. Getting Back to a place of realizing I am nothing but a broken piece of humanity in a broken world. And I'll never have a hope if I try to work it out on my own. I need Jesus. And I just need to surrender to Him in faith and believe. And have that grounded in Him. But you've got to let go. You've got to let go. and Come to that place of faith, hope, and waiting and surrender. For Him coming into your life. Finish your one scripture, Lamentations chapter 3. Always reminds me of Lamingtons. Lament. Lamentations. Written by Jeremiah. This hope will give you a revelation of God's faithfulness. I'm going to finish with this. Lamentations 3, 18 to 24. Read it out. I cry out. My splendor is gone. Everything I had hope from the Lord is lost. Wow. The thought of my suffering and roaming is bitterness beyond words. I will never forget this awful time. As I grieve over my loss. Verse 21, yet I still dare to hope when I remember this. And this is what he remembers. Because of the Lord's mercies and great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in Him. The Lord is good to those who wait on Him, who hope in Him, who trust in Him, who depend on Him, to those who search for Him. Jeremiah had come to the place where the only hope, God was the only hope that remained for His people. And that's the same message that we have to a hurting world. Jesus Christ, we don't have all the answers. We don't know all the, the, you know, the solutions to people's problems, but we do have Jesus. <laughs> we do have Jesus. And He is the light of the world, and He is the answers. Verse 22, coming back to just a couple of words. Because of the Lord's mercies. Mercies here describes the, listen to me, the Father's deep emotional yearning for His wayward people. You see, they had walked away, but listen, He yearns for them. So get this, God's mercy is 
His compassion towards you, even though when, when you deserve punishment. God's mercy is His, His commitment to restore you, even though you deserve to be punished for your sinfulness. God's mercy to you is His covenant of love expressed to you in the person of Jesus Christ. Failure. That blew me away when I studied this. <laughs> we keep trying to pretty ourselves up and to make us good enough for God. God sees your wayward heart if you've got away or whatever the, whatever the steps that you've taken to get yourself into the mess where you're in. God has a deep yearning compassion for you no matter what your state of mind and no matter what you may think about Him and no matter how often you blame Him and no matter how often you rebel against Him. He has a deep yearning compassion for you and His covenant based on Jesus Christ and what He has done stands forever. He loves you. I'm saying that quite deliberately for those people who keep disqualifying themselves because they think they're so bad. His mercy is for you. And it says, because of His mercy and His great love, I am not consumed, which means I am not eaten away. I am not used up. I am not exhausted, destroyed, or demolished, or laid waste. I am not overwhelmed because of His love and His mercy towards me. And they are new every morning. Amen? They are new every morning. So I messed up today. Today's a new day. And that mercy is new to you today. God has not changed. Stretch out and receive it this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And it goes on to say, verse 23, great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. That word means to be firm, to be sure, to be established, to be steady, to uh, enduring. Uh, it, it, it's certain. So no matter what I go through, and no matter what the valley of trouble looks like for me, and in the world, and the hurt that I'm in the middle of, I can be rooted in my Father's great faithfulness and stand secure in Him. Therefore, I hope in Him. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, team. Therefore, I hope in Him. Why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you in despair and discouraged? Why are you disquieted within me? Why are you so sad and disturbed? Hope in God. Wait upon God, for I shall praise Him yet. Amen. Amen. I asked Andrew to um, lead us in a song this morning. It's, it's an old song, and I knew that he would know it. <laughs> no no uh, pun intended. <clears throat> and as he sings this, and uh, the rest of the team, are you coming up, coming up as well? Were you getting up to sing with two, Wendy? Uh, well, you know it as well. Come on. Teach, teach the young people how to do it. I want us to sing this song. And as we sing it, if you're in a place of hopelessness this morning, I want to pray with you. And I know Pastor Scott will as well. I want to pray with you. If, if you're one of those people that have been doing all this stuff and following the ABCs in the hope that God will bless you but you're still in trouble 
and you just can't go on any longer. I want to pray with you. And we will this morning. I really believe you know, when, when elders lay their hands on you, something happens. Not that Pastor Scott is, well, he you knows we, he's special. But it's nothing in us. Faithful God. That God chooses to work through his people. So I believe this morning that something can happen to you. So I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet and as you see these words, just focus on him. I worship you. And if that's you this morning, you'd like us to pray you. Come this morning. Just come out of the front here. Doesn't have to be a big deal. My strong deliverer. I lift you up. Faithful God. Come on, sing it with us. Faithful God. Faithful God. Sufficient one, I worship you. Shalom, my peace, my strong deliverer. I lift you up. You're a faith. On worship, worship, use your own words faithful as we finish this morning. Focus on Jesus. Faithful God. Yes, a faithful all, all that I need is in you. I worship you. Shalom, my peace. You are my peace. In the storm, my strong deliverer, I lift you up, faithful God. Oh, I lift you up, faithful God. Come on, there's other people here this morning. You need us to pray with you. This is not ritual. I totally believe it. We're singing about God's faithful. We're singing about His mercy. Faithful to you that feel that you're not worthy of mercy. To you that have stumbled time and time again. God. And He's saying, my mercy is new to you every morning. You're my faithful. You may be in a situation that has nothing to do with you. You're totally innocent, but nonetheless, you're filled with a sense of despair and hopelessness because it won't go away. Let us pray with you today. This is not an admission to everybody else. I'm somebody in trouble. No, this, this is us, the church. I really believe God will do something. I believe in the miraculous. <laughs> Come on, sing it again. God, you're so faithful, faithful God, all sufficient one, I worship you, let's worship him this morning, shalom my peace, my strong deliverance. I lift you up, you're a faithful God. Sing it one more time. Faithful God. Faithful God. All sufficient one. I worship you. Lord, my peace, my strength.
strong deliverer. I lift you up. You're a faithful God. We lift you up. We lift you up. You're a faithful We hope you've enjoyed listening to this podcast from Grace Life Church. For more information about us or any of our services, please visit our website at gracelife.com.au.